All right, so today, guys, I have the latest and greatest from Rockets. This is the Cone Pro Air. And for those of you guys who enjoy a nice, clean looking ergo design, this right here in my hand, if you can get past its price, might be the perfect upgrade for you. So the Cone Pro Air comes in two colors, black and white, and it retails for $129.99. It weighs in at just about 75 grams, and then the length is gonna come in at about 125 millimeters. Grip width is gonna be at about 63 and a half millimeters, and then the height is gonna be slightly sloped left to right with its highest point at about 40 millimeters. If the price is too steep or the weight is too much for you guys, there's also gonna be a wired version coming out called the Cone Pro. And that comes in at $79.99 and 66 grams respectively. I actually don't have the Cone Pro for testing in a house, but looking at the specs, performance should be nearly identical between the two. The majority of the mouse is gonna be a nice durable plastic, but it's overall built incredibly well. It does have a slight flex towards the rear flare that will actuate the back side button, providing you press it hard enough, but honestly, even with the most intense gaming session, I doubt this is ever gonna really become an issue for you. It has a nice matte finish, and at the tips of the left and right triggers, you'll actually find a translucent shell very similar to the Burst Core and the Burst Pros, and it allows for RGB to shine through. These triggers have basically no side-to-side -side play, very little pre-travel, but it does have a little bit of post-travel, although it's nothing to be concerned about. Underneath these triggers, we find the Rocket Titan optical switches. These have definitely been fine-tuned and are a bit more timid in comparison to the Burst Pro and the Burst Cores. This is a good thing in my eyes, and they feel and sound a little bit closer to a solid mechanical switch. I really like these switches. They're not perfect, and they don't feel quite as good as the Amarons in my G502 Lightspeed, but they're getting there, especially considering that these are optical switches within this mouse. They're not mechanical switches, so they're getting close, they're feeling great, and Rocket just needs to keep tweaking them, and eventually they're gonna get to a point where they feel basically identical. Scroll wheel has a nice rubber coating and feels okay. It's easy to scroll, and you have like a slight tactical bump while you're doing so, but it's nothing special. It's also missing side scrolling, which is something I find to be very, very useful when I'm using my mice because I like to use side scrolling while I'm editing, but for gaming, you know, no side scrolling isn't that big of a deal. On the sides, you'll find very slight grooves that'll help with gripping the mouse, and shape-wise, you'll see that both sides flare out front to back as well. The outside edge is pretty flat top to bottom while the inside edge provides a nice little shelf for your thumb to lie on. Side buttons are placed really well here and accidental clicking shouldn't be an issue for anyone using this mouse as your thumb should actually sit underneath them. I really like the feel of these switches and they have very little pre and post travel and absolutely no play whatsoever. So at the front, we have a recessed USB-C port, and even though it is recessed, you should be able to use basically any USB-C cable out there, as it looks like the hole is a standard size, right? I actually went around the office, I grabbed a bunch of the USB-C cables I have here, and I tested them all out. Every single one of them worked, so shouldn't have any issues there. Now, the included cable is 1.8 meters long, and it's what Rocket calls their Phantom Flex cabling. It's the same cabling they use on their Burst series of mice, and I liked it over there. I like it here as well. It's super lightweight, it's nice, it's braided, you know, there's nothing to complain about with the mouse, even if you're using it wired. On the bottom of the mouse, we're gonna have three 100% PFT mouse feet. The front and the back are nice and large, and then you also have a smaller one that surrounds the sensor. They're great and allows the mouse to glide really, really well, but this mouse actually only comes with one set. And while I typically wouldn't complain about this because it's fine, it's okay, it's, you know, that they have one set. This is their flagship mouse, and Rocket actually includes two sets with their much cheaper Burst Pro. So that goes for around $60, and you get two sets of mouse feet with that mouse. So it just kind of confuses me here why we don't see that same trend with their flagship. It would have been nice to see it here. Again, it's not that big of a deal, but again, still, it's kind of strange. In any case, there's also going to be a spot to store your USB dongle down here, an additional customizable button that by default changes your mouse's profile, as well as a switch to toggle between 2.4 gigahertz wireless and Bluetooth. Now, the battery life on either mode is going to be excellent overall. I've only had this for about a week, so I've only been able to test it so much, but in that time, using the 2.4 gigahertz band, as well as with RGB on, this went 
from 100% down to 30%. That's it. So this thing has excellent, excellent, excellent battery life. Even if you're using the 2.4 gigahertz connection, it'll obviously get better if you turn RGB off and it'll get even better if you decide to go with Bluetooth. Of course, Bluetooth is more for productivity. It's not for gaming. And we'll talk about that more in just a moment. Keep in mind, I also do work from home and I use this mouse all day long. So I've been using it for just my general work. I've been using it for YouTube work, for gaming, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. It only getting down to 30% is really, really impressive. What also makes it a little bit more impressive is that Rocket has implemented what they're calling rapid charge, which will give you guys five hours of playtime with only 10 minutes of charging. Now I did test this feature and it seems to be accurate, at least in regards to how the software reports it. I didn't actually just charge it for 10 minutes and then play for five hours straight. I just looked at the before and after um, when I was actually charging it through the software and it seemed to be about accurate, so there's that. As for gaming forms, this mouse feels great in hand. I love holding this thing. I can hold it for hours on end and it performs as you would expect for a top end you know, flagship gaming mouse to perform really well. Of course, the Bluetooth mode isn't made for gaming, as I just said, and so it shouldn't be used for that, but for productivity, Bluetooth works perfectly fine, or even for like some more relaxed gaming, you should be perfectly fine with the Bluetooth connection. But the 2.4, it'll let you do what you wanna do. It won't hold you back. Now, I did wanna talk a little bit about connectivity with this mouse, and this mouse has good connectivity as long as the dongle is relatively close. And the software actually has like a nifty feature that outlines signal performance, and it basically tells you if you have good performance, like excellent, it says good or fair and, and so forth. And gaming with this on anything other than good or excellent is very unusable. Honestly, it's not very good at all. So the big thing here is that it could have been avoided and it could have been fixed. In the box, you don't get an adapter that you see in like the G502 Lightspeed. You see it with the um, Razer Viper Ultimate and the Viper or the uh, Basilisk Ultimate as well. You have like these little these little kits that let you bring the dongle closer to the mouse. You don't get that here, and I think it's a big miss for Rocket here. I wish they would have added it because when I was testing this with my test bench, the distance is a little bit from my hand and where the mouse is going to be at, and the back I/O of my motherboard, and so the connection is further apart, and it's not usable in that mode with the test bench that I have here. So I think a lot of you guys will probably have your, your gaming rig on the right hand side. And if you have it plugged into the back IO of your motherboard, the distance isn't that long and I think you'll be fine. But for those of you guys who have your systems on your left and this is on your right, you might find some issues here. And again, I think it could have been completely avoided if that adapter was included. Fortunately though, the adapter only goes for less than $10 on Amazon right now. You need a female to female USB-C to USB-A adapter for this actual mouse. So you can actually plug you know, your USB dongle into it and then plug your charging cable into it. And then you'll be perfectly fine. You can put that adapter wherever you want and make sure the connection is nice and close. But again, that's an extra $10. And for this being a flagship game mouse, I really think that it should have came in the box with this mouse. The software is also the Swarm software, just like you use on all the rest of the other peripherals that you can get. And you can do basically whatever your heart desires with this. You can modify DPI, polling rate, lift off distance, set up macros, change buttons. You can do a ton of different stuff. And the software is one of the more reliable softwares that I've used. However, when I added the module for this mouse, there is a bug, at least for it was for me, and I've tried to fix it, but I haven't been able to fix it with the Rockets ELO 7.1 Air headset. As soon as I installed the, the module for this mouse, that stopped working completely, um, at least with the program. Whenever I plug the dongle in for that, it crashes the program. The headset works fine with my system still, it just doesn't work fine with the Rocket Swarm software. You just can't use it together. I did speak with the Rocket team. They are working on fixing this. They're working on actually updating the entire Swarm software. So hopefully by the time you guys get this mouse, if you have the headset with this, you won't have any issues like I did. And so looking at this mouse overall, I think this is an incredible addition to Rocket's mouse lineup. I've been searching for that Ergo, that Ergo mouse that could replace my G502 Lightspeed for a while now. And I love the G502. It's my favorite mouse I've ever used. I, I love the, the original. I loved the Hero. I love the SE Hero. I love the G502 Lightspeed. But I started to fall in love with lighter mice after I started testing out like the Viper Mini, the G203. And I just wanted a lighter version of it. And this feels a lot like what I'm looking for. Yes, I lose a couple features such as like the extra programmable buttons. But again, I think this feels a lot like what I am actually looking for. It's lightweight, has solid performance, has great, great, great battery life, and the design is just killer. This is, I mean, this sleek design, this white one, blue, is insanely nice. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments below. Would you spend $129 on this mouse? Because that's the big, that's the big question here. 
is this worth $130? And I love this mouse, but $130 is a lot for a peripheral. Anyway, thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.